Hi guys, it's Professor Fernandez here, and we are learning about MLA this week. Um, this is one of those type of things that you just have to learn it. You gotta slog through it. But here's what's so interesting about MLA. It really is a system that kind of teaches you other things than just the citations, right? It teaches you patience. It teaches you attention to detail, which is very important when you're writing. Um, it teaches you to be mindful of the sources and really have respect of them and the process of writing and the process of research. So MLA. Um, so this video in particular is really about to point out how it all is supposed to look like at the end, what it's supposed to look like. Um, the issue here um, that I hear a lot about from students is uh, why we learn citations, like what goes on a work cited first, and then we learn about in-text citations and how do they actually play with each other and what does it all mean and how do I know what to do with my in-text citation um, at all. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. I'm going to show you an example, a student example, um, renamed Johnny Appleseed. So I'm going to show you a Johnny Appleseed example. I'm going to show you what the works cited page looks like and then what the inside of the essay looks like with the in-text citations. Um, and there's a reason why I'm doing works cited first. And the reason why is a the works cited page is probably the worst page to do because you do have to do the citations and you have to be very attentive to detail. But it's also one that students rush through very quickly. They just finish this Herculean effort of doing a research paper and it's um, they're tired. They just wrote maybe the conclusion or they just finished editing and now they have to think about, well, where did I get this from? And, where did I get this from? Um, so, you know, doing it first helps you <laughs> to do that when you're fresh and so you make less mistakes. It also is important because the work cited is going to tell you what your in-text citation is going to look like. And so how are you going to write what you're going to write when your in-text citation isn't done correctly? All right, so let's talk about the works cited page first. Okay. So this is a four page essay with the work cited on page five. The work cited is not a separate, it's not a separate file. It is a separate page. So that means that when you turn in your research essay, it's going to be all in one file. You're not going to turn in the paper and then turn in the work cited um, as a separate thing. It's all one thing but it does go on a separate page. So you don't want it to be like at the tail end of page four. See how page four ends here? This particular student, Johnny Appleseed, did a, um, a page break. And if you don't know how to do a page break, definitely YouTube it. Um, Google Docs does page breaks. Word does page breaks. Um, pages does page breaks. All, all works, all um, word processing um, software, even if it's like something like OpenOffice or LibreOffice, also does page breaks. You just have to look it up to know how to do it. It's super easy. So there's a page break, which means that the next thing that is going to be typed will be typed on a new page. And so they see, you see how this is formatted? Let's talk a little bit of how this is formatted here. You have the title works cited here. Now, works cited is two words. It's capitalized. The W and the C is capitalized. It's in the middle of the page. I also want you to notice a couple of things. It is not underlined. It is not in a bigger font size than the rest of the page. It's the same font size. It's still 12. It's still Times New Roman. There's nothing special in the formatting other than it's capitalized and it is centered, right? And that's it. That's the only thing that is centered on this page. 
then you're going to write your citations. And of course, I've done um, a couple of lessons on how to do citations, and I've probably given you a couple of videos on citations. Please go back and refer how to do citations. Look at the MLA worksheet. That's very helpful as well. So here is the citations, yay. And the citations, of course, are in alphabetical order by the first letter of the citation. And when, you, when I say letter, I mean letter. Let me see if I have an example here. Okay, let's see, let's look at this citation and this citation. They are both M's, right? They both start with M's. So, Merhan, Meron goes before motive. Now, I want you to notice how this particular citation doesn't have an author to it. Um, so if there's no author, you move on to the title. And the title, of course, is in, in, in quotation marks here because it's part of a bigger thing. And so the M in motive is how you decide where it goes alphabetically, right? So just because there is no last name doesn't mean that that particular citation is, doesn't, is in no man's land. That is not the case here. Um, what you want to do is put in an alphabetical order by the first letter of the citation. I also want you to notice that each citation is a hanging indentation. Now, I've done a couple of videos here on how to do a hanging indent, and you're welcome to look, look it up in class. If I haven't put it in the class module, please do email me and I can look it up for you and send it to you and put it in the module as well. I do so many videos, guys, on things that um, sometimes I forget that I have done something and I'll do two videos of the same thing or I'll forget to put something in there. Um, more than likely I've done a video, so just email me and ask me, hey, have you done a video on how to do hanging indentations in your work cited? I will very gladly send that to you. Okay, so everything is a, ha a hanging indentation. And you're wondering what that means is essentially this. The first line of your citation goes to the left and all the subsequent lines, so line two, three, four, if it's a five line citation, sometimes they do go that long. Um, so lines two through five are indented. Um, old school way it's five spaces in but because now we have computers and we don't have typewriters how you are truly learning this um you can actually highlight it hit hanging indent and it will do the whole page for you essentially again I have a video on that please let me know if you need me to send it to you so everything has a hanging indent you're probably looking at these dashes here and what these dashes mean um, and this is something that doesn't always come up, but in this particular example, because this person used several sources from the same person, they went ahead and did dashes. And that's what that means. When you have, when it's uh, the same person, but different sources, for example, um, they're doing the Adnan Syed case here, and they use several sources from Sarah Conan from the website. And it's the cell phone log, the cell tower map, the actual podcast, the timelines, right? They use those four sources and they, in their, in their individual sources, right? But the actual curator name is Sarah Conan. Um, of course, this is an old, an old version <laughs> of this. If you are in my 1301 and we're still using this case, um, the creator isn't Sarah Coney. However, I'm going to use this as an example. If it's the same creator, then you're going to you you're going to do a dash here, a period, and then go into the title. Okay, so that's kind of how that works. And you want to do this first again because you know, is attention to detail. You can actually go to the writing lab and get this looked at. 
Um, you can compare it to your MLA, your MLA worksheet um, that I'm given, I, we give out in the module. Of course, if you're not in my class and you're watching this on YouTube, there's tons of MLA worksheets out there. Um, you Let's talk a little bit about EasyBib and Citation Machine. Now, I am not going to sit here and say, don't use it. I can sit here and say, don't use it. And I've said this several times before. This semester, I have come, I've had a, I've had a come to Jesus conversation with myself to this. And I am going to say, why not use this? You can use EasyBib and Citation Machine. However, this comes with a caveat. You have been taught how to do these citations properly and have been given resources on how to do them properly and how to check if they are cited properly. Just because EasyBib and Citation Machine cites it for you doesn't necessarily mean that those citations are correct. You still need to check whether those citations are correct and how you do that, you really want to maybe use the MLA worksheet and say, well, is this correct? Oh, there's a comma where there should be a period or vice versa. Again, attention to detail. And so you can make those changes there and then put it in the works cited page. Now, I'm also going to say this with this other caveat. If EasyBib or Citation Machine cites something incorrectly, you are not allowed to tell me that EasyBib and Citation Machine were wrong. They weren't wrong. You were wrong because this is under your name and your grade. It is your responsibility to make sure those citations are correct. If they are not correct, it's your grade. EasyBib and Citation Machine, they're not my students, but you are. So that is my caveat there. I'm done. I'm coming off my high horse here. Okay, so this is what you want to do with your Works Cited page. Why is this important to do this first? I Like I've said before, if you do it at the end of writing your paper, you're going to be really tired and really frustrated and you're just going to want to put it out there and hope for the best, which is not what you want to do because I have seen papers fail just on their Works Cited alone. Another reason, why, again, why you want to do this is because your in-text citations depend on how this works, right? Again, MLA is a system, right? So what it is is a conversation, and it's a conversation with the reader that says, hey, this information is not mine. I got it from this source. And the in-text citation says, this is the source I got it from. And the work cited page says, yeah, this is where you find the source. So anyone who reads your, your essay, including me, and I have done this, I will read something and say, oh, well, that's interesting. And I will look at your in-text citation, then look at your work cited, and then go look for that source. If I can't find it based on your citation, or you have an in-text citation that's not on your work cited page, that's points off. Okay, so let's see how that works. So we have all this wonderful stuff and let's go inside this essay, which is actually a really well-written essay. It did really, really well. I'm going to go to one of the first citations here. And the first citation here is motive. All right. So of course the first citation that's being used here is probably one of the most complicated things, but we'll see, we'll look at it. So we have an in-text citation and an in-text citation is always in parentheses. So you'll open a parentheses, you'll put the in-text citation, you'll close this parentheses, and you'll put a period at the end of it. Now, why is there a period at the end of it? Because your in-text citations are inside of your sentences. Hence, call, hence they are called in-text citations because they're inside the text. Ah, right? So... When you're doing your in-text citations, they're inside of the sentence. So you're not going to end the sentence until your citation is done. When your citation is done, when you close that parentheses, then you put the period or the punctuation mark right there at the end, okay? 
So let's look at motive here. All right, so motive is the in-text citation. And what this student is telling me is that this particular information that they put in their topic sentence did not come from their brain. They, it came from their research. So I'm going to go to their work cited page and look for a citation titled motive. I know it's there because we talked about it earlier. So let's scroll down to the Works Cited page and look for motive. It's under M's as we looked at earlier and it's right here. So that means I can go to Credo Reference, which is a database and look under the World of Criminal Justice Encyclopedia for the section called motive or I can literally just click this link here and it will show me where she got the information or he, right? Johnny, um, or they got the information. Okay. So that's how it works. Let's look at another one. Um, let's look at the next one. Let's look at this one. Serial coning. Okay. So we know that this came from one of the coding sources that we saw earlier, but it says serial here. Why? That looks so strange. Let's look at it. All right, let's go to coding. Starts with a K. And we know there's a cell phone one, a cell tower one. There's a, oh, serial podcast. We know that that is the in-text citation for this. Okay, so you're probably wondering why didn't she or he or they write Coning Sarah, right? Well, this is why. Remember when I said all of these sources come from this one creator? Yes. So if Johnny wants to cite the podcast, they'll take the first or the, the first word here or the last name, which is Coney, and then something that describes it. It's usually like the first word or the first couple of words and put it in the in-text citation. So for example, it's Coney, comma, serial, and there you go. And look at how it's formatted, right? Serial is in italics because it's in italics in the citation. Um, and I want you to see how there's a comma here. Now, there's usually not a comma in your in-text citations. It's usually just last name and page number if there's a page number. But because it's, um, it's uh, more than one, there's a comma there, all right? Let's look at a simple one. Of course, like we start off with like the most com most complicated. <laughs> most complicated citations. Let's go hammer 38. All right. So this tells us that the creator's name, last name is hammer and it's on page 38. So the basic structure of your in-text citation is last name or the word. And then if there's a page number, like it's in a book or in a journal, then you put the page number. I want you to know here how it's not P period 38. Um, there's no comma here. Um, it's just a space. That's how you want this done, right? So you open the parentheses. It's the last name and then the page number. Close the parentheses and put a nice little period at the end because it's what? An in-text citation. It's part of the sentence. And so that's how it works. So let's scroll down here and look at the works cited page and look for something called hammer. There is hammer. And we know that this particular source that she used or he used or they used is from Julianne Hammer. And the title of it is Marriage in American Muslim Communities. It comes from the source called Religion Campus, volume nine, number two. This is the public, the publisher. Um, and they accessed it through my favorite thing ever, the databases. They accessed it through the database and it is on, it is in between those two pages, right? 
you, another video will talk about containers and whatnot. Not this video. We're not doing that on this video. So that's how it works. And this is why you've got to do your works cited page first and work on that first. And then your works cited will tell you how to do your in-text citation and what goes in between those parentheses. Let's get an example here. Loftus Elizabeth F. Right. So this right here is from a database called Credo Reference because of course this is in uh, the second um, Ooh, this is in the second container. Again, another video talks about containers and I will forward you that if you still need some work on containers. And so if I am going to cite something or if Johnny is going to cite something, they are going to put Loftus. And open the parentheses, put the word Loftus because it's the last name. They're not put, going to put Elizabeth or F. You're going to put Loftus close the parentheses, put a period. Why not Loftus and then false memory since that's the title of what they are citing? Ah, because there's only one Loftus. Remember how when they cited Coning and had Serial, it's because there's four sources attributed to one creator. In this work cited, there's only one thing attributed to Loftus. So you're only going to use Loftus. And of course, there's no page numbers here. So there's no page numbers to put in the citation. So you're only going to use Loftus. That's how it all works. That's why it's a system. That's why you need to do your work cited page first. So you know how you're going to use your citations um, or what you're going to write in your in-text citations within your sentences and in your paper. I hope this kind of clears up how it all works. Um, let me know if you need me to expand on anything. More than likely, I've done that video. Or if you don't quite understand, I will be more than happy to explain. I hope this helped. Bye, guys.